Breakups are often the symptom of problems in a relationship. My workbook series, The Knowledge, is focused on helping you change your life in four key areas. Retaining the information that I teach, personal growth, improving your relationships, and of course, reattracting your ex. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about how to know someone's attachment style right away. Wow, that's pretty quick. And it's really important too, because if you have spent your life dating people that maybe are very avoidant mm -hmm. or maybe disorganized, mm -hmm. and you have decided, you know what, that's it's been enough for me. Mm -hmm. I need to try and make some changes. Maybe. Um, maybe date somebody that's anxious yep. and you're just like it's been overwhelming and I'd like to try something new because let's face it if you date you know one attachment style you're gonna get one set of issues if you date another you're gonna get another set of issues mm -hmm. nobody's gonna be perfect but having an idea of what you're getting into yeah, is gonna a help is a big help yeah. so Margaret is gonna talk about some of the things to look at and we'll share some personal thoughts on that as we go I have borrowed some of this from an article I saw on the computer by a Dr. Lovenheim, who I'm going to look at again because I thought his stuff was quite interesting and thought-provoking. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, Dating apps and matchmakers want to know dozens of things about us, our favorite food, movie, hobby, all to help us find a good match. But the questions may be missing, but their questions may be missing an essential ingredient that scientists now say could be the key to a successful match, and mm. that is attachment style. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and he points out that scientists worldwide now are talking about attachment style as the best way to approach relationships, mm -hmm. um, and that there are three major, three main attachment styles that I'm proud of you all to know: um, secure, anxious, and avoidant. Of course, it's disorganized, but it's very right. it's less. It's yeah. not as it's much. Few people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you have enough to at least make informed thoughts. With all this in mind, it's reasonable to want to compare your own style to that of a romantic partner before getting into a relationship. Absolutely. It's possible to learn your own attachment style through giving it a whole lot of thought and reading some things and working on yourself. Mm -hmm. But what about the people you're interested in dating? Yeah. You want to know about that? Absolutely. You definitely right? want to know what their attachment styles before you attach to them. Absolutely know what you're getting. All right. The structure of early conversations. Okay. So we're going to look at the conversations to get some ideas, right? Yep. yep. A first date mostly consists of conversation, which is great because you're trying to decipher the way a person relates to other people. Listen closely and you can often pick up signals that point to whether your date is secure, mostly trusting of the world and people, avoidant, pulls away from relationships in favor of independence, mm -hmm. or anxious, craves intimacy and requires constant reassurance. Mm -hmm. okay? Avoidance are easy to pinpoint based on the way they talk in those early interactions. Yep. They're uncomfortable talking about feelings. Instead, they tend to focus on what they do, their jobs, their favorite TV shows, and other such topics without getting too personal or too deep. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, secure people, remember they get all the goodies. Meanwhile, secure people will be a lot freer and more versatile about what they talk about. Mm -hmm. In a first conversation, secure people are more likely to be relaxed, pleasant, and to converse with. They're, they're easy company, generally. Mm -hmm. um, anxious people aren't really interested in the other person, although they can look like they are. They can come across as being secure and quite interested in you. Yeah, yeah. But they're interested in the other person liking them and offering them security. Mm -hmm. It's like, here's another philosopher, it's like Bette Midler's line, enough about me, let's talk about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> that's a great, isn't that a great sequence? Yeah. Um, that's the anxious person talking. 
To help sort out whether your date is secure or anxious, consider the additional first date clues. How much a person self-discloses. Mm -hmm. Avoidants are unlikely to talk much about their inner selves, especially with a virtual stranger. Yes. Overall, they'll reveal little, consciously or not, communicate that they really and communicate that they really don't need a partner. Yeah. Now, we have to remember always about avoidance that like everyone else, they really do want a partner, mm -hmm. but they've been sort of scared off by early experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so avoidance won't share much and will let you know that they can do just fine without you. Mm -hmm. Anxious people will tend to disclose too much too soon. Really important to know. And that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. um, well before the other person is ready for closeness. This urge to self-disclose can reflect their need to quickly find intimacy, to yes. control their own anxiety, and to feel an interpersonal connection before any has actually been made. Yeah. And of course... You know, with like anything, there's a continuum. Of course. And some people will be certainly more extreme than others. Right. Um, and the result is that the anxious person may appear to be needy and overeager. Like the girl that told me she loved me four times on the second date. Yes, like that one. <laughs> um, or there are people you meet just even in the course of doing business and so forth. And there are some people who run breathlessly up to you to talk about a business matter. And before you get finished, you know their entire life story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Secure people, they'll just hit the Goldilocks formula. Not too much, not too little, but just right. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they get everything. Okay, so three, we're going to look at how much they self-disclose. Two, we're going to look at how much they self-disclose. And three, we're going to look at their personal dating history. Secure people tend to be comfortable in the world and at ease with themselves, whether or not they're in a relationship. If, through conversation, you learn that over the years, your date has had a couple of serious relationships, but also spent considerable time without a relationship. This could be a sign of a person with a secure attachment style. I agree. They can do it either way, whether they're in a relationship or whether they're not. Yeah. They can manage. Mm -hmm. Anxious people, on the other hand, because they crave intimacy and feel emotionally incomplete without a partner, will often have been in a continuous series of relationships since early adolescence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In discussing former partners, they may express strong, unresolved feelings, such as holding on to anger or still carrying a torch. Now, we think we just heard about holding on to anger. Yeah. In contrast, if your date has reached early or mid-adulthood and never been in a serious relationship, that can be a sign of avoidance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a related sign would be if this same person, while mentioning a wide circle of acquaintances, does not appear to have even one or two intimately close friends. Wow. Okay? Yep. And that's absolutely true. Um, the anxious person has probably usually a bunch of friends, but they're not all that profoundly close with any of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So which attachment types make good matches? Just as you thought. If you're secure, congratulations. Not congratulations, but well, congratulations on your good luck because none of us chooses the family we're born into. Yeah. So congratulations on being so fortunate. But you definitely can become more secure. Absolutely. That just takes work and effort and understanding yourself right. and understanding others. Absolutely. You can do it. And You're not doomed. I was more anxious growing up. Now I'm a lot more secure than I was. Mm -hmm. And it took me time and effort, but it can be done. Yes, it can. If you're secure, you can probably match up well with anybody else. And actually, dating advice given to other people is probably, if you, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, um, find a secure type. So what am I, excuse me, my good man, are you secu securely attached? Absolutely. Okay, then good, I'll take you home. I'm anxious. <laughs> if you match up with another secure person, you're good, blah, blah, blah. An anxious, anxious match can work 
Although that pairing can sometimes result in partners becoming highly dependent on each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're both both anxiously anxious attached, people. yeah, we can become fused, you know, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Um, it's good to be aware of this going in so you can discuss the issue and try to head it off. And the more you know about your attachment style, the better success you will have Absolutely. in a healthy relationship, okay? And that's one of the things that I wanted to say is that people in the comment sections will say, can it really work with an anxious avoidant? Yes, yes, yes. it can. The more you understand your uh, inner workings, your fears, your right. desires, yep. and the more you understand your partners, the more you can manage your expectations, be more reasonable, right. learn to soothe yourself, calm yourself, and, and manage expectations yes. in a relationship. I could date somebody who's anxious. I could date somebody who's um, avoidant. It, for me, understanding once I understand what's going exactly. on with them, I can make it work. Yes. And I understand that each of them are going to have their pros and their cons. Right. There's pros and cons to dating either. Absolutely. Um, now this article questions whether uh, anxious and avoidant people can make it together. Mm -hmm. And they say an avoidant-avoidant match can work too. But there is the danger that when the couple hits a rough patch, both of them might shrug their <laughs> shoulders both. and walk off in different directions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I could see. <laughs> yeah. And that they, would probably be the hardest, right? That would be, well... <laughs> or maybe too disorganized, that might be yeah, the... Oh, too disorganized, well, I, I know them. I've met them already. <laughs> um, but the two, the two avoidant could do it, and I've seen couples like that. And, you know, you think, well, why do they never spend any time together and blah, blah, blah. And I can remember my mother saying to me when I was a kid, yeah, but it seems to work for them. Oh, yeah, so it does, you mm -hmm. know? Um, the match that's the most likely to be problematic is anxious avoidant. In this pairing, each person needs different degrees of intimacy mm -hmm. so that the anxious person tries to get close while the avoidant pulls away. Absolutely. When these needs are not met, they have opposite ways of responding, thus creating a vicious cycle that further stresses the relationship. Now, we disagree, as Craig just mm -hmm. anticipated and pointed out. We think it can be done. Um, if you're anxious and your partner is avoidant, if you're aware of it, there's no end to what you can resolve, okay? Yep. Um, if I need a whole lot of togetherness and Craig needs a whole lot of independence and time alone, um, we can work on that so that both of our needs get met. If you need two days to go um, to your conference on living in chicken coops, you can do that. Mm -hmm. If I want to have lunch every day with you for a week and it's going to help my anxiety, we can do that. So there are ways that you can work it out. There are, of course, extremes to everything. And so somebody who's extremely anxious yeah. um, or extremely avoidant may be tougher to manage unless they really decide that they want to work on it and get help. Both, both parties would have to be aware and willing. Right. We can make it together, but it's going to take us some work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I see a lot of the anxious people in the YouTube comment section get really angry and hostile towards avoidance. They can't do it. It'll never happen. It'll never work. It can. Yes, and it does all the time. It does all the and time. And just because it didn't for your situation doesn't mean that it, number one can't get turned around, or um, should or shouldn't get turned around. That's up to you. It's a personal yeah. decision yeah. on what you you know want for yourself and your relationships. And, and Margaret are. are and I aren't going to sit here and tell you what to do. No. But you got to just think about and consider how your relationship might have been different if you were less avoidant or if you were less anxious, depending upon what you are, um, or more secure. And could that relationship work if you make that effort? You might remember when we talked about our friend, Dr. Susan Johnson, that she had very kindly described several of her family members to demonstrate the different kinds of attachment. And she talked about um, her very avoidant uncle Clyde, I think it was, mm -hmm. and her anxiously attached aunt, somebody or other. So she would be busy in the house and she was very pleasant and friendly and liked to have people over and he lived in the shed mm -hmm. okay um but they had a fine life together and and you often look at couples like that and say what is this about but you know what if it works for them they were able to work it out three cheers for them mm -hmm. yeah 
the thing is, is that the more you learn about attachment, Absolutely. and I probably, I don't even know how many videos I've covered it in, uh, the more you understand it, the more you can recognize what's going on internally with you and your partner. And the more you understand it, the sooner you can identify it in the people that you're dating. Yes. Before you make an emotional commitment or connection to somebody, right. and believe me, you're not going to see uh, all of the signs right away, right? Because, you know, you want to look at maybe their relationships with other people, how they talk about other people, how they talk about their Absolutely. commitments with their friends and their family, and that will give you some idea, too, of what their attachment style will be. Because in the beginning, it's all fun and exciting, yeah. and it's fun to date somebody, well, once they're attached to you, you're going to see a lot of different sides to them that you did yes. not see yes. before they were attached. Absolutely. Yeah. So, educating yourself is the key because the more you know, the more you can decide, okay, this person will be right for me or I can't be with somebody who's going to be like this because it just doesn't work for me. Right. So, and feel free to be creative. In what way? In, well, I mean, if it works for you, for your wife to make the cookies all the time and you live in the shed, then do it. You don't have to live like, you know, the families we see on TV. Yeah. Uh, there can be all kinds of different ways that work for people. Absolutely. Yeah. Just find a situation yeah. that works best for you and yeah. makes you happy. Yep. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I hope so. And of course, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. And please feel free to sign up with me. And I want to say one other thing, and that is that I hope everyone sleeps well tonight, feeling safe and secure. There you go, Margaret. Putting in a little personal message for yes. you. Yes. Put a like on the video for Margaret and all the hard work she did in this video. And that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.